So, did you become a chiropractor so that you could sell? Yeah, I didn't think so. None of us did, right? Uh, so if you don't want to have to sell in your chiropractic practice, you have to hit what I call the validity stage of your practice. So what's that? Well, the validity stage is what happens when <clears throat> you reach what I like to call the level five practice. Uh, still a little confused about that, still a little, maybe even intrigued? Stick around, I'm gonna to explain to you what a level five practice is, what the validity stage is, and I'm gonna help you get to a point where you don't have to sell your care anymore. Just keep watching, I will explain it all. Uh, so, first and foremost, welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott. Glad to have you. Today, Wednesdays, we are gonna be working on that perfect case acceptance. And again, I'm going to show you how to get to that level five, which is really exciting. It's about you know getting that dream home, those dream cars, even a retirement plan, uh, all those things that chiropractors want in life without having to sell. So first and foremost, if you just join me, I see Paul joining me. Uh, let's see here, trying to get all my stuff set up as always. Let's see up there. All right. Uh, yes, got it. Okay. Uh, First and foremost, answer the question today, which I see Paul is doing. He's li learning to listen to his body for more his routine, morning routine. <laughs> Just establishing a morning routine, it looks like. Uh, decide if it needs a stretch, meditate, or do a quick workout. So you're kind of doing it as you go, which uh, I kind of like. Listening to your body, going through it, I love it. Question of the day, I didn't even say it yet, but it's, it's already getting answered. So what is one skill or talent that you're practicing currently, especially during this time of, of maybe a slowdown? Maybe you're, you're set at home. Uh, what's something that you're working on? Uh, for us, for some reason, which actually I don't like the reason, uh, I was talking to my wife the other day about training our new puppy, um, which is my daughter's dog, but it, it's just been, he's a puppy. He's excited. Right? He's a Weimaraner, and he's just got a lot of energy. Uh, so we were talking about training him. The next day on my Facebook feed, obviously a ad for dog training and I fell for it and I bought the little system uh, but we've been working really hard on it and it's just going really well the, the dog's doing tricks much more well behaved in just three days so that's kind of our big focus right now around the house uh, besides all the things we're doing you know chilling out watching some some movies with the kids uh, one of the skills and talents we're working on is really becoming good dog trainers I see Ryan joining me thanks for stopping by Ryan make sure you answer that question today up there uh, again Wednesdays are gonna be for um, perfect case acceptance from now on. So I'm really excited about this program. I know that uh, this is what changes practices, changes them quickly. Uh, anybody who has gotten to this point where they're focused on their perfect case acceptance, uh, and they do these things as far as getting, developing cases, presenting good cases, uh, and therefore getting case acceptance, uh, ha ends up hitting those level five practices. But it I got to do a little setup work before we kind of really get rolling with the case acceptance philosophy. Uh, because really, if you look at it, the best case presentation that you can give, and this comes as a shock to a lot, a lot of people, best case presentation you can give is not having to make one at all. What? Uh, yeah, I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but uh, we'll explain that here in a second. Having the client or the patient come into you, your office already pre-sold already wanting to accept your treatment plan, that's the optimal. Now, how do you get to that point? Well, you gotta work your way up what I call the profit level ladder. Uh, I've found that there's five different levels of practice, practice development, not case development, practice development. First of all, there's profit level one. Uh, so this is the level I find too many chiropractors at when your income doesn't even match your, your overhead cost. It leaves you with nothing to take home, and you're actually spending money to run your practice. I've found a lot of doctors this way. I find a lot of doctors this way who's, you know, maybe their wife has a good job, uh, so she's basically funding the doctor's hobby of going to the practice every day. That's a level one profit practice. Level two profit practice, this is where your income only covers your overhead. Uh, you have no takeaway profits. Uh, you're just breaking even. And again, this is the case where typically someone else is taking care of you or you're just you know, burning through your savings until you just can't go anymore. Uh, anybody in that level right now obviously is going to have a lot of trouble as we come out of this uh, uh, coronavirus deal. Uh, but that's a level two practice. Level three practice. This is when your practice's overhead costs are covered. And you have just enough to take home for a modest lifestyle. Uh, you, you live good. Uh, this, unfortunately, I would say is, is kind of the danger zone. Um, this is a place where people get comfortable. They're not happy, but they're so they're comfortable, so they don't strive for more. But that's a level three practice. 
level four practice. This is where your practice's overhead costs are covered. You have enough take-home profit to live a very comfortable lifestyle. Plus, you have a good contribution into your retirement savings. Uh, this is a case where you might be saving your age. Uh, if you've heard that technology, that's where a goal I want all my, my clients to get to. So if you're 40 years old, you're saving $40,000 a year. If you're 48 years old, you're saving $48,000 per year. That's a level four practice. Now, level five, this is what we're all here for, right? This is what, you know, I say that and I'm kind of laughing, but I get emails from people like, oh, I never wanted that for my life. That's fine. Uh, obviously, you, 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 whatever you want to accomplish, and if you're happy with where you're at, that's great. Uh, again, too many people get stuck in level three because it's comfortable, but they're not necessarily happy. But level five is, is the dream for most people. It's the ideal profit level. It's where your overhead costs are covered. You have enough take-home cash to live that luxury lifestyle. You know, your, your dream home, your dream cars. Uh, you can make that extensive contribution to your retirement plan. And again, I've seen, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is where all my clients are at. Uh, but I've seen enough of them to know that that is a nice place to be. Um, it, when your practice is at that demand level, it makes your perfect your case acceptance a lot easier. Uh, and that's what we're trying to get to. So let's take a few steps back and find out how we get to the level five prop level. Because as I go through the um, perfect case acceptance over these next eight, 10 weeks worth of Wednesdays, uh, I'm going to be showing it to you from the level prop five profit level. That's the goal to get to. But you can't just go there. Uh, if you're at a level two or level three right now, you can't just present like a level five. You have to develop that. Um, so we have to stay, start at your case presentation or your lack thereof. So if you're at level two or level three, your case presentation is probably not where we want it to be, and or you're just not doing it at all. So I see uh, Casey, David, Kenneth have sent to me. Good is the enemy of great uh, as far as a level three practice. Very good, David. Thanks for sharing that one with me. Uh, so this case acceptance that we're talking about, and again, let me define it again real quick, and I know I'm, I'm trying to keep these shows fairly short, but case acceptance to me means that the patient accepts your recommendations, schedules the visits, shows up for the visits, pays for all the visits, but then also goes out and drags all their friends and family into your office, pre-sold, that's the key there, to do exactly the same thing. And that's what we're shooting for here. What I want you to understand is that this case acceptance is only one third of what I would consider the, what I call the Cairo launch formula. The first part of it is demand development, having tons of new patients flowing into the practice regularly. The second part of it is what we consider hyper productivity or hyper capacity. So you have enough productivity, enough capacity to meet that hyper demand. You're able to serve all the patients that are coming into you. Because a lot of you out there, even if you're getting a modest number of new patients, can't serve them anyway because you don't have the productivity or the capacity. This is what we're working on here, case development, case acceptance. I mean, what good does it do to develop that impressive demand, to build the well-oiled machine that it takes to meet that demand, and then to blow it in the sales process? I mean, if you have a million patients coming in, but they don't buy anything, what really have you gained? Or what have they gained, for that matter? So if perfect acceptance, case acceptance system will help you to reach your goals with far fewer new patients, and I really feel like that should be the goal. Again, I see so many docs out there that are just churning and burning, trying to get as many new patients in the office as they possibly can, and they don't sit down and work on this perfect case acceptance so they can do it with fewer new patients. Uh, and again, that should be the goal, and that is what gets to a level five, which doesn't always seem logical. But I'm going to tell you right now, logic and common sense are the enemy of next level production. Logic and common sense, like I talked about yesterday with, or Monday, uh, when I said to quit trying harder, um, logic and common sense kind of keep you stuck in that same place. They're the, 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 they're the enemy. If it wasn't true, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would have a level five practice. One of the keys here as we get into perfect case acceptance is learning to recognize case acceptance when you see it. And if you were with me last Friday, I explained to you that it doesn't always come wrapped up in a, yeah, doctor, let's do this. Let's go. Oftentimes it's wrapped up in a, yeah, let's just get started and see how this thing goes. Uh, and you, unfortunately, doctor, then start hammering the patient. And that's always a mistake. Understanding when you're getting case acceptance and understand that people are starting with you is key here. Looking for objections and trying to overcome them is a huge mistake. It might have worked back in the 90s. doesn't work anymore. So over these next Wednesdays, I'm going to be laying out the whole system for you. I'm going to help you to avoid all the pitfalls that come along with case development and case acceptance. What I want to explain to you today is that there's three stages to case presentation. There's three stages for doctors uh, when it comes to, to case presentation. The first is chaos. 
Uh, the first is when you have absolutely no idea what to say to the patient at all. I mean, you're just stumbling over your words and the patient loses all trust in you and all trust in your treatment plan. Uh, that's pretty typical coming out of school. Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty typical five, 10 years into practice, someone hasn't taken the effort to work on their case development. They sit there spending all their time marketing, trying to get new patients in, but they don't develop the cases. So to get out of the chaos stage, a lot of you, you hit the internet, uh, you download some scripts, you do some research, maybe you get a coach who teaches you how to hammer them and, and overcome objections and creates a, you know, a, a worse problem. Or if you're lucky, you get a decent script. You get some uh, order uh, systems uh, together for your, your case presentation, your case development. But the final and the ideal stage that's going to take you to that level five profit level that we talked about is when we hit the validity stage. So we have chaos, then we have a very systemized presentation. But when you hit the validity stage, that's when your patients want your treatment. More patients want your treatment than you can actually handle in your practice. Now, why is that so important to your profit level? Obviously, the validity stage shifts the power from the patient to your practice. When they feel like they're lucky to get an appointment with you, meaning that they... You know, they come in with pre-sold on what you have to say because, uh, again, they feel like they, they're, they're happy just to be in your practice. You can say goodbye to all the pressure of nailing that case presentation because you've already got the client. Uh, it's, it's a done deal at that point. And, th again, that is our goal. That's what we're reaching for. And I wanted to start this program showing you what the ideal looks like, and, and we can work our way up to that. Again, you can't just jump from a level 2 to a level or level 3 up to level 5. You've got to work your way up there. So you have to work to get to that validity stage. So... We go back to the stage two of case presentation. We're going to work on a good systematic presentation. And here's a couple rules I want to share with you just to get us started. Because uh, again, every Wednesday we're building on this. And by the way, we're going to be leaking this stuff, like I said, a little bit every Wednesday. If you want to go a little faster uh, and have a little more access to me, go join our High Performance Cairo 2.0 group. Uh, I'm going to be going live in there an extra time every week. Uh, really developing this case presentation and helping you out. So go join the High Performance Cairo 2.0 group. Uh, if I don't have it already, I'll put a, a link in the comments down below. Um, that's where we're, like I said, I think we're going to develop a little bit more and we're going to be able to give you a little more than I can here in the morning shows. So, a couple of rules for you. I want you to start aiming for a balanced presentation. A balance between your treatment of what the patient came in for and what you want them to have. I want you to tell them what they need, don't get me wrong, but I want you to find that balance for them, uh, as well as the timeline. I also want you to look for balance in your clarity, because too often that's the problem, especially in those docs who are in level one, level two of, of profit, but also in stage one of uh, presentation where there's chaos. Uh, you've got to be more clear about what you want for that patient. I've, I've seen so many, when I'm done on-site consultations, where the doctor tells me that this is their script, and I go in and listen to them, and it's nowhere near what they're actually saying. You need to be more clear so the patient understands it. You also have to have a balance of power. Power as in your sales technique. You can't be too aggressive, but you have to have confidence in your practice. You have to have confidence in your knowledge of the treatment plans. Uh, and if you can balance that power with being too pushy, you're going to be in good shape. So remember, validity is being seen as the only doctor who can do what you do. And that should be your goal. Patients, when you have validity, come into the natural conclusion that you are the best. And that's what we want in their minds. So if you have confidence in your practice and you're able to, to display that to your patients, they're going to understand that you have the confidence. They're then going to have confidence in you. And it's going to lead to that validity, which means you don't have to make as much of a presentation. When you simply tell them what it is expected, they nod their head and go along with it. Uh, your staff can come in and clear up the rest. Nearly everyone that I've met who's been in the stage two or three practice has self-sabotaged their case presentation, self-sabotaged their case development at some point. So we're going to try to fix that over the next few Wednesdays. Now, I do want to open this up for questions, and I know we're just kind of scratching the surface of case presentation of case development. Uh, but if you have any uh, questions, you can ask them here, uh, but I'm probably going to steer you over to the High Performance Cairo 2.0 group um, so we can develop some of this stuff. And again, I'm open, especially during this time where we're, we're all kind of uh, in flux, uh, to answer questions and work with all of you. So if you want to get your practice to that next level, again, like I told you, logic and common sense are kind of the enemy of that next level, you're going to need to learn to serve your clients at a higher level in order to get your practice to that next level. And that's what we're shooting for. All right, clicking over here, I see we're already over 14 minutes. 10 minutes is my goal, but I keep missing it. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show today. Somebody just, uh, Athanasios, hopefully I said that right, said he likes my ideas. Um, I've got a few comments there that I'm going to answer after the show so I can close this, wrap this all up for you. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we're going to start working on referral mastery. And I know I've got a lot of stuff going on here, but I feel like it's actually good 
it's almost like school curriculum. You're going to learn a little bit of everything, and then we'll keep developing it every week. Uh, and again, great for this time when you may or may not be closed. I see a couple clients on here watching me right now who I know are open, which is fantastic. I'm so glad you're able to continue working during this time. Uh, if you're shut down, you should be spending a lot of time uh, with us trying to uh, learn some of these systems so that you're ready to, to crush it when you get back up. Anyways, everybody have a great day. Come back tomorrow morning for referral mastery. I'm actually going to put a link down below for tomorrow's show too. So you can click through to it and get a reminder so you don't miss it when we go live tomorrow. Talk to you later.